Each time you load Cloud Extend Excel for Salesforce, you'll see this screen, which holds all of the templates that you've built. More on templates in just a moment. Now this add-in is also context sensitive. All the actions that you can perform will change depending on where in the process of managing your data you are. Here I'll click the menu icon and go through some less frequently used options. First are reports. When you click on reports, you'll see a list of all your Salesforce reports. You can stream these reports into Excel. Next, we'll go to account settings. With account settings, you can either view your subscription or you can connect to up to nine different Sandbox accounts. Clicking on the trash icon allows you to restore previously deleted templates. The help icon will take you to our support site and sign out obviously will sign you out. Back to the main page, the magnifying glass is used to quickly search for previously built templates. If I type in lead, I can see all the templates that I've created that have the word lead in them. The plus sign is used to create a new template. And the folder icon with a little down arrow is used to import templates that we've created for you. These are essentially sample templates for brand new users to have a starting point. And the right side menu will allow you to delete your templates. So today we're going to actually create a template from scratch. Now Cloud Extend creates tables that map Excel and Salesforce. And these tables are stored as templates and they're available to you anytime you log into our app. Let's get started by clicking the plus sign to create a new template. Now we want to select the object type that we want to work with. So in this case, I want to work with opportunities. I typed OPP, which then gives me a list of objects that have the word opportunity in them. Once I click on my object, in this case, opportunity, a list of fields, including custom fields that I can choose from become available. And now I can scroll down if I want to. Um, and we, we show the first 100 fields here or I could just start typing ahead. And this is usually what I'll do. So in this case, I want to see name. I want to see owner. I want to see amount. And I want to see close date. I'll go ahead and click on next. And here I've got to give my opportunity template a name. So I'll call this opportunity demo A. I can either click save or save and load. Save and load allows me to start interacting with my Salesforce data right away. Save will just store my template. I'm gonna choose save for now. Just to show how you can come back to that template that you just created and click the pencil icon to make changes. In this case, I wanna change the sort order and I also wanna add a new field. So I wanna add the description field. That's done. Now I also wanna move the owner to the top so I can click and drag these names here. I want to move close date to the bottom. And later when I load this template, you'll see that the fields come over as columns. So owner will be in column B, name in column C, amount in column D, etc. I'll go ahead and click on next and I'll click on save. And now let's load this template. So now this table is turned into an Excel table that's going to be used to manage our Salesforce data. Let's take a look at row one. Now row one, if you look at the formula bar, you can actually see the Salesforce field IDs. Uh, and we hide that in a white font so we don't confuse end users. Now you can start, you can make any changes you want to the data in row two. So if I wanted to call this expected close date, I can go ahead and change that. We'll have no impact on the functionality, but don't make any changes up here unless you're a power user. I can actually start typing in to this table right away if I wanted to create brand new data. So if I wanted to, say assign this opportunity to Justine Berto. I could type in her name and then in the background, we do a lookup and grab the full information. And just show if we look at the entire formula bar and click over in the owner name, you'll see that we're actually grabbing the internal ID as well. So we're resolving that for you so you don't have to. And then here I can give the opportunity a name and I can put an amount description and close date. And then I can click on update and create a new one. We've got more tutorials on that. Today I'm gonna to show you how to use data filters because just, just because you've got an opportunity loaded here, doesn't mean you wanna see all million opportunities that happen to live in your Salesforce account. So in this case, I only wanna see opportunities that are owned by Justine Berto and that are not in a closed one or closed loss state. So to do that, I'm gonna create a data filter and I'm gonna add a new rule. And I need to choose the object that I want to pull the fields from for the rule. So opportunity and then the fields. So in this case, I want to say owner and I'm going to say is equal to Justine Berto. And now I'm going to add another rule. 
And notice the AND and OR operator here. I'm going to just check this box and make this AND. And I'm going to say opportunity. And I, I want to choose the stage where it is equal, not equal to. Close loss. And I want to add one more rule. And in this case, opportunity where the stage is not equal to closed one. And I also need to change this operator to AND. Now, I'm going to go ahead and click Save. Now I'm going to come back in and edit this filter. I just want to highlight that if you're an expert with Sokol, you can actually come down and start modifying this Sokol statement as well. So I'm going to go ahead and click on Back now. And then here, if I click on Download, that's going to go out to Salesforce, and it's going to bring in just the data that I want. So in this case, it's retrieved 37 records. And now I can start doing things like changing the owner. If I wanted to assign this to someone else, I can start typing the name and the name will resolve. If I'm not sure of the name, I can come over here and I can click on View Owner Values, and then this will give me a list of valid owners that I can change them to. Uh, I can also do things like change the close dates, so maybe we want to make this 4-10-2018, and let's just go ahead and do, we'll just change the close date for all of these just for demonstration purposes. So now that I've made the changes to the data that I want, I need to push this information back up to Salesforce. I'll do that by choosing Update. If I want to update just one row, I would highlight the row and click on Insert Update, and it will update just that one row. In this case, I want to update all of the rows. So I'm going to go ahead and choose All Rows, and then click Insert Update. And we're going to color code the ID field to green when the update was successful. We'll also tell you over here how many records were updated successfully, and then push them back up to Salesforce.